You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Before we get to our Big 7 list for tonight, we have some breaking news we need to share with you this evening. Within the last few minutes, the TBI just announced the endangered child alert for a 14-year-old missing out of Hawkins County has now been called off. Aaliyah Counts has been found safe. Again, that coming in just a short time ago from the TBI. Well, now let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now that we're following for you. And topping the list tonight, KFD issuing an important reminder after an early morning fire left two people dead. Although the investigation into that fatal fire along Mississippi Avenue remains ongoing, arson investigators suspect the house did not have a reliable smoke alarm. With that discovery in mind, the department is urging everyone now to not only make sure you have a smoke alarm in your home, but also take other precautions. We know that smoke alarms saves lives. That noise is what wakes you up and gets you out of the house when something happens. We say we want you to close your door to your bedroom because that protects you from the smoke and heat of a fire. But we also want you to be able to hear the smoke alarm that may be in the hallway. So all of those things combined together are extremely important. And we have this latest information about Monday morning's fire as well as tips to keep your family safe from fires on our WATE.com website. Next on the Big 7 for you right now, a man found guilty of intentionally driving into a group of people back in 2019 has now been sentenced. District Attorney General Jimmy Dunn tells us that William Phillips of Jefferson City will spend just shy of 15 years behind bars following the deaths of a pregnant woman and her two-year-old son. Arrest warrants say Phillips claimed to hear a voice in his head that told him to, quote, go kill meth addicts. He then said the voice told him there was meth in the baby stroller Sierra Cahoon was pushing, and that's when he decided to drive into it, killing her and Nolan Cahoon, the family of Carson Newman assistant athletics trainer Matt Cahoon. Next now on the 7, two people are facing charges tonight following a chase in North Knox County. Records show everything started yesterday afternoon on Dry Gap Road when a deputy tried pulling over a car with tinted windows. A chase ensued. We're told the car then crashed into another vehicle before continuing on. The tires then blew and the car crashed into a field along Pedigo Road. From here, we're told a man, now identified as Lucky Clark Jr., ran and got into someone's Jeep. Deputies were able to stop that Jeep, arresting Jr. and Sky Miller from behind the wheel of the first vehicle. Now, a search of Clark's car reportedly turned up more than 100 oxycodone pills in the car, plus marijuana, cash, and a loaded gun. Clark is charged with evading arrest, driving under the influence, and leaving the scene of an accident. He also faces various drug charges. Miller is charged with being an accessory after the fact and evading arrest. Continuing our Big 7 list for you, the Hamlin County Sheriff's Office is con com uh, commending three first responders for saving the life of a female inmate in the Hamlin County Jail. Six on your side's Kristen Gallant was in Hamblin County today and spoke with the sheriff's office on how they're preparing other officers to respond to certain medical situations. Two officers and a nurse jumped into action when they found an inmate unresponsive due to an overdose. According to the sheriff's office, the inmate snuck the illegal substance into the jail and then ingested it. She was found in a cell without a pulse. Jail staff Officer Angela Hodge, Officer Cassie Bell, and Nurse Brandy Klein immediately administered Narcan and performed CPR. The inmate was then rushed to the hospital and released the same day. Their quick response and converted back to their training. If they didn't do these things, it would have been a totally different outcome for the inmate. The sheriff's office says they're making sure all their staff is trained for these type of scenarios. Reporting in Hamblin County, Kristen Gallant, WATE 6 on your side. All right, Kristen, thank you. Sheriff Chad Mullen says even with regular pat downs and wand scanners, illegal contraband getting into the jail is still an issue. To help combat this problem, the department bought a new full body scanner that all deputies will be trained on starting next week. We're also told CPR training is mandatory for all Hamblin County deputies, and each patrol officer has Narcan on hand for situations just like this one. Next on our list for you tonight, Tennessee's Attorney General is partnering with Montana's AG to lead a coalition against credit card companies that are now moving to track and monitor firearm purchases. Attorney General Jonathan Scrimetti's office tells us letters have been sent to the CEOs of American Express, MasterCard, and Visa after they announced they would classify gun sales separately from general merchandise. 
We're told the letters say this decision creates a list of gun buyers and also risks personal information being obtained and misused by people who oppose Second Amendment rights. Despite this criticism, some gun control advocates say this change will help better track suspicious gun purchases. Tennessee Governor's Office is planning to issue a Hispanic Heritage Month proclamation for the first time since Governor Bill Haslam was in office in 2014. Current Governor Bill Lee is expected to issue the proclamation as the volunteer state is sustaining growth and diversity in its population. Now, data from the 2020 U.S. Census Bureau indicates that Tennessee's total Hispanic and Latino population is around 6.9%. This year's proclamation is a change from last year when Governor Lee told WATE that his office had no plans to issue a, a Hispanic Heritage Month proclamation, saying his office celebrates every Tennessean in their history and their past. Governor Lee's administration has not yet released the details on when this year's proclamation will be made. Each year, National Hispanic Heritage Month is observed from September 15th through October 15th by celebrating the histories, cultures, and contributions of American citizens and residents whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. And we're also marking Hispanic Heritage Month right here on WATE, spotlighting Hispanic culture and history in our area. It's all coming up on Thursday, October 13th at 3.30. Again, you can watch right here on WATE, 6 on your side. Rounding out the Big Seven for us, Catholic Charities is filling in the gaps in rural Scott County after noticing health care shortages in the region. The St. Mary's Legacy Clinic, a mobile medical mission, will now be offering their services in Scott County. That's in addition to the new Pregnancy Help Center that Catholic Charities just opened in Helenwood. The center will help with pregnancy testing and adoption options, along with providing diapers, formula, even cribs to parents in need. It's a resource that's, well, been needed some time in the area. The health care that was here was closed. There wasn't a lot of options. We see our pregnant moms go all the way to Knoxville to birth their babies. We are blessed to have an old rectory building that we started remodeling in early 2021. And we have put several rooms in uh, that building with the remodel and we opened in December of uh, 2021. All services offered by St. Mary's Legacy Clinic are free of charge, and the new Pregnancy Center will open three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 to 4.